Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be going over my most controversial video and that is the time when I fixed my EVAP leak. It was a code that I had on the 650i, 19302, and all I did was change a gas cap and I kind of dragged on the video a little bit longer than I should have and it pissed off a lot of people. Uh, in this video I'm going to be kind of going over the, the sort of way that I probably should have gone from the very get-go uh, to make all you guys happy. And that is just basically a proper test. Funny enough, I had the exact same code pop up like all of you guys said would. It happened and you know, haters are gonna be so happy to see that my, my 19302 code came back. Uh, it was about eight months after the video was uh, released. The car was trouble free for that whole time and it popped up again. So this time I said, okay, here's an opportunity. I'm gonna set things straight. We're gonna do it right. And uh, I'm gonna make you guys happy and I'm gonna show you guys how to properly diagnose the system, not just change a part and fingers crossed it's good, which is basically what I did there. The reason why I say just change the gas cap because most people don't change it. It's a regular wear and tear item and uh, it's a very easy thing. That, like, it's $50 to spend on a gas cap, or it's at least $100 in diagnostic tools that you only ever use once. And it's a lot more digging and, and checking out, and it's not super easy to diagnose a system like that. So it's much simpler, and it works in most cases just to change out the gas cap, and usually it solves it. However, there are those cases where it's not that, and that's when people become frustrated. So, I basically, I bought a $100 testing smoke tester off Amazon and I started trying to research how to diagnose the system properly. So I started learning how to test the system on older BMWs and I actually encountered a bit of a roadblock because it doesn't work the same way for these cars as it does on the earlier generation cars. Even, even the same chassis code, which is an older engine, uh, actually works differently than this car, which is a 2014 with the TU engine. It's a different technology in the EVAP system, and it's, it's not the same way as uh, the old system was. So with older generation cars, uh, you would take a smoke system, a little tool like this. This is an Amazon tool for about 100 something bucks. Uh, you take the positive and negative connectors, one is on your charging port on your engine bay, one is on just a regular screw like you would basically charge in the car. Flip the switch, apply a little bit of baby oil in this, and it basically shoots out smoke from this hose here. And it's very stinky, so uh, I would do this in a well ventilated area if possible. And uh, what ends up happening is it ends up shooting out your uh, EVAP exhaust pressure relief valve in your fender line. And so on the E90 generation cars, M54s, the early N63 cars, you had this little leak detection pump with a little um, solenoid and you could switch that solenoid to be closed, it would close the system and then it'd be in sort of a, a test mode. And so you can test for leaks once the system is closed. On the new generation cars, you don't have that little leak detection pump. This right here is the leak detection pump for the later generation cars. Uh, like my N63 TU powered one. Um, this is not to be confused with the earlier model which had the white part on it. This right here, it kind of serves a similar function from what I can see, but it's a little bit different. There's not a solenoid inside here that, that physically opens and closes. It's actually much different than that. So let's look at all the parts that we've got here. So obviously we've got this switch of control board this has the sensor 
which basically tracks when, whether the system, this little unit is open or closed. We have the diaphragm in the inside of this whole thing, which is placed as such inside this casing here. And we have a little spring, okay? This is obviously broken, but uh, this is very good for demonstration because we can actually see what's inside. And this spring is always pushing up and it basically, it goes, or in this case, in this orientation, it's pointed down. So it's pushing down on the diaphragm. So this diaphragm is always being pushed this way. When it's pushed this way, it will allow air to pass through from the uh, fuel tank down past here and into and out the filter. Now, if this is always being mechanically pushed down, then there needs to be some way for this to override. This does not override anything because it doesn't have the capability to do so. So the only thing that I can really think of that would allow this to you know, be opened or closed is some sort of vacuum applied from the fuel system. So the fuel system actually needs to go instead of under pressure, under vacuum to suck this diaphragm up and basically not allow, basically create a seal here and not allow for air to escape out into the filter. So the system, the fuel system is applying vacuum um, in order to achieve this. So the reason, the way that basically everyone says like, oh, this thing over here is likely gonna be what needs to be replaced in your car if you have an EVAP uh, leak, like, you know, my last video. I don't see this being possible um, because like, I mean, unless this rips and it doesn't allow for the system to go sealed anymore um, or this control board fails if water gets in, but the, the chances of that, like this, the reason this one failed is because this was in an accident. I actually took mine apart, um, just like this, my original one, and it was perfectly fine. There was nothing wrong with this gasket. Um, this is off of like a, a wrecker that I found. I, I got it for free because it was damaged. Um, so it's really good for you guys to see. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the concept of it. It's, it's very simple. Um, so I don't see this thing really being an issue. And if you do really want to take it off and, and check it out, I would strongly suggest you um, check this out on your own car. If you are having EVAP leaks, just to prove to yourself that this is not the issue. Um, don't buy one until you know for sure that this is bad. Uh, speaking with other BMW techs and all that stuff, most of them say that this um, unit here is not the cause for most of the EVAP leaks. And it's more often than that, your, your gas cap or the um, purge valves inside your engine bay. Those are very common issues. So check those two things, gas cap, purge valve. But yeah, this, this is not going to be your issue most of the time. So I hope that clears some things up for you guys. So the problem is, is that you can't really lock it up and test it properly. So what do you do? And what I ended up doing is I just removed the leak detection pump off the car. There's a little metal plate underneath and three screws and the wire. And you pull out that pump and basically you put it into the feed for that leak detection pump. And in doing so, you have a fully, in theory, sealed system. We checked everything, nothing really seems to be leaking. Like this thing is basically going. We removed the uh, module that goes over here, the leak detection pump. Um, and a couple of things that you should check for when you're looking for an EVAP leak. You should check your gas cap, of course. Uh, you should check all the lines that basically run around the fuel tank and the fuel tank itself, see if there's any smoke coming off of that, your filler neck, 
Um, you've also got the connection around that leak detection pump. I mean, that's going to be leaking. You can't really test that. Uh, and then you've also got, if you lift your rear seat up, you have the gas tank over there uh, on the low pressure pump. Um, on your low pressure pump, you're going to have uh, potential for leaks over there as well because sometimes those caps crack or whatnot and they stop sealing. Uh, and the other thing is your um, EVAP um, sort of relief solenoids in your engine bay. Alrighty, so like I said in the uh, other clips there, um, the other thing that you should check are your purge valves um, and basically what you're looking for. Um, you can check this line here as well. There's a line that runs basically to here. There's some seals that may go bad around those. In my case, they were fine. Um, and then there's sort of on the N63 TU cars, there's a crossover pipe that goes over here and to your uh, purge valve um, on the on the original N63 there's only this one on the TU cars you've got a second one underneath to the left side of this intercooler so you need to remove this air channel and your uh, air filter box uh, and then you can access that um, you check these in two different ways so first you check them electronically um, make sure that they don't have too high of a resistance um, and the other way that you check them is by basically checking if they leak. You unplug them and basically feel with your finger if air is escaping or something like that. Um, I'll post a more detailed video from another channel that I followed um, in order to diagnose that. It's very simple. Um, so that's a easy way to test that um, because this obviously it wouldn't show up in your um, smoke leak test uh, because obviously you can't it's an internal leak it leaks in into the engine uh, it doesn't leak externally so you can't see the smoke um, I checked all those things and nothing there was also seals for the, those those uh, lines and all that stuff nothing was leaking funny enough my gas cap again eight months later failed Nothing over here leaks. And anyway, it's not like it wasn't tightened or anything like that. Genuine BMW part failed. And it uh, started leaking out again. I don't know, maybe there's a design flaw with the uh, BMW gas caps now. They're made by somebody else as compared to what they used to be. And that's why it only lasted eight months versus the original one, which lasted me like 10 years. I hope that clarifies things uh, for you a lot uh, out there checking out my videos uh, and I hope that it makes some of you guys happy. I don't mean to make people mad, it's just I just talk about my experiences and if it uh, you know, makes you mad, it makes you mad, I guess nothing I can do. And uh, thank you guys for watching so much, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.